Day 7. Genesis 18-19. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre in the heat of the day, while he was sitting at the entrance of his tent. And Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. My Lord, said Abraham, if I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, that you may wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a bit of bread so that you may refresh yourselves. This is why you have passed your servant's way. After that, you may continue on your way. Yes, they replied, you may do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent and said to Sarah, Quick! Prepare three seas of fine flour, knead it, and bake some bread. Meanwhile, Abraham ran to the herd, selected a tender and choice calf, and gave it to a servant, who hurried to prepare it. Then Abraham brought curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared, and he set them before the men and stood by them under the tree as they ate. Where is your wife Sarah? They asked. There, in the tent, he replied. Then the Lord said, I will surely return to you at this time next year, and your wife Sarah will have a son. Now Sarah was behind him, listening at the entrance to the tent. And Abraham and Sarah were already old and well along in years, Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. So she laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my master is old, will I now have this pleasure? And the Lord asked Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Can I really bear a child when I am old? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you, in about a year, and Sarah will have a son. But Sarah was afraid, so she denied it and said, I did not laugh. No, replied the Lord, but you did laugh. When the men got up to leave, they looked out over Sodom. And Abraham walked along with them to see them off. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and through him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. For I have chosen him, so that he will command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, in order that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has promised. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great. Because their sin is so grievous, I will go down to see if their actions fully justify the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will find out. And the two men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Abraham stepped forward and said, Will you really sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous ones in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous ones who are there? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do what is right? So the Lord replied, If I find fifty righteous ones within the city of Sodom, on their account I will spare the whole place. Then Abraham answered, Now that I have ventured to speak to the Lord, though I am but dust and ashes, suppose the fifty righteous ones lack five. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? He replied, If I find forty-five there, I will not destroy it. Once again Abraham spoke to the Lord, Suppose forty are found there? He answered, On account of the forty, I will not do it. Then Abraham said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak further. Suppose thirty are found there? He replied, If I find thirty there, I will not do it. And Abraham said, Now that I have ventured to speak to the Lord, suppose twenty are found there? He answered, On account of the twenty, I will not destroy it. Finally, Abraham said, May the Lord not be angry, but let me speak once more. Suppose ten are found there? And he answered, On account of the ten, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he departed, and Abraham returned home. Now the two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When Lot saw them, he got up to meet them, bowed face down, and said, My lords, please turn aside into the house of your servant, wash your feet and spend the night. Then you can rise early and go on your way. No, they answered, we will spend the night in the square. But Lot insisted so strongly that they followed him into his house. He prepared a feast for them and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Before they had gone to bed, all the men of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called out to Lot, saying, 
where are the men who came to you tonight? Send them out to us so we can have relations with them. Lot went outside to meet them, shutting the door behind him. Please, my brothers, he pleaded, don't do such a wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them to you, and you can do to them as you please. But do not do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Get out of the way. They replied. And they declared, this one came here as a foreigner, and he is already acting like a judge. Now we will treat you worse than them. And they pressed in on Lot and moved in to break down the door. But the men inside reached out, pulled Lot into the house with them, and shut the door. And they struck the men at the entrance, young and old, with blindness, so that they wearied themselves trying to find the door. Then the two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, a son-in-law, your sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are about to destroy this place. For the outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to the sons-in-law who were pledged in marriage to his daughters. Get up, he said. Get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. At daybreak the angels hurried Lot along, saying, Get up. Take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But when Lot hesitated, the men grabbed his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters. And they led them safely out of the city, because of the Lord's compassion for them. As soon as the men had brought them out, one of them said, Run for your lives. Do not look back, and do not stop anywhere on the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. But Lot replied, No, my lords, please. Your servant has indeed found favor in your sight, and you have shown me great kindness by sparing my life. But I cannot run to the mountains, the disaster will overtake me, and I will die. Look, there is a town nearby where I can flee, and it is a small place. Please let me flee there, is it not a small place? Then my life will be saved. Very well, he answered, I will grant this request as well, and will not demolish the town you indicate. Hurry. Run there quickly, for I cannot do anything until you reach it. That is why the town was called Zor. And by the time the sun had risen over the land, Lot had reached Zor. Then the Lord rained down sulfur and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he destroyed these cities and the entire plain, including all the inhabitants of the cities and everything that grew on the ground. But Lot's wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of the plain, and he saw the smoke rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham, and he brought Lot out of the catastrophe that destroyed the cities where he had lived. Lot and his two daughters left Zor and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zor, where they lived in a cave. One day the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man in the land to sleep with us, as is the custom over all the earth. Come, let us get our father drunk with wine so we can sleep with him and preserve his line. So that night they got their father drunk with wine, and the firstborn went in and slept with her father, he was not aware when she lay down or when she got up. The next day the older daughter said to the younger, Look, I slept with my father last night. Let us get him drunk with wine again tonight so you can go in and sleep with him and we can preserve our father's line. So again that night they got their father drunk with wine, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him, he was not aware when she lay down or when she got up. Thus both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter gave birth to a son and named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also gave birth to a son, and she named him Ben Ammi. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. Matthew 6 verses 1 to 18. Be careful not to perform your righteous acts before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by men. Truly I tell you, they already have their full reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. 
for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. Truly I tell you, they already have their full reward. But when you pray, go into your inner room, shut your door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not babble on like pagans, for they think that by their many words they will be heard. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So then, this is how you should pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive yours. When you fast, do not be somber like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they already have their full reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that your fasting will not be obvious to men, but only to your Father, who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you.